Okay, so we got five questions, I believe. Um, two, eight, 27, 30, 31. Um, let's get this done quick. Two says the absolute value of this. So you're looking for, so again, think about when that will happen. When is the absolute value of something less or equal to eight? Well, think about this number eight. Can we take the absolute value of eight? And if you take the absolute value of eight, would that be equal, less or equal to eight? Yes. So we know eight, the number eight can fit in here, right? It's part of the solution. And numbers to the right is not, because the absolute value of 9 is not. And 10, 11, 12 will not make this inequality true. But numbers 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all the way down to <clears throat> negative 8 will work. <clears throat> okay, so this one, it's, that's it. So what number? So we're looking what values of x will make this inequality true. And the values of x that will make this inequality true will be all the numbers that are less than 8 and greater than negative 8. So if we put any of these values from negative 8 to 8 in here, it'll make this inequality true. So this one's pretty easy, pretty simple. In the middle, 8 next, 8. Um, x plus 3, less or equal to 4. So again, if you just want to think about when this uh, will be true, I mean, try to ignore what the inside of the inside the absolute value symbol is. So just think about when will something be less or when the absolute when will the absolute value of anything uh, be less or equal to four? Okay. So if you take the absolute value of four, it will work. The absolute value of three that will work. Two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, and up to negative four. These values. Would work. So again, let me rephrase this. So if I put any of these numbers between negative 4 and 4 in here, that would make that inequality true, right? So basically now we gotta add, we got to look for all the values of x that I can substitute in here to match that. So let's say, I mean, let's just for argument's sake pick that x equals 5. If x equals 5, would this inequality hold true? Well, if x equals 5, you're going to get 5 plus 3, which is 8. And if you take the absolute value of 8, it's 8. That's definitely not less or equal to 4. So the value x equals 5 is not going to work. So we're looking for all the x values, all right, that would result in the number between negative 4 and 4. So again, this is a less than, and by now, you probably realize that it's an and problem. So we got this, and x plus 3. So this number over here has to be a number between negative 4 and 3. Minus 3, minus 3, minus 3. Um, that's negative 7, less or equal to x, less or equal to 1. So, your answer, so the x values that will make this inequality true will be any number between 1 and negative 7. And you can always check. So let's say you picked, I don't know, negative 5. So if you put negative 5 over here, you'd get negative 5 plus 3. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. And if you took the absolute value of negative 2, it would be 2. And is 2 less or equal to 4? Yes, it is. So again, you can pick. So our solution is this. Here's our solution right here. x has to be a number between 1 and negative 7. Twenty-seven. Okay. Four minus five, negative two x minus seven, blah blah blah, negative one. So we're gonna simplify this a little bit. So we're gonna do minus four, minus four, and that's gonna go away. Negative five multiplied by negative two x minus seven, less than negative five again. And what do we do here? We're going to divide by 5, right? I'm sorry, we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. Divide this by negative 5. Divide this by negative 5. And that's going to go away because negative 5 divided by 5 is 1. And then there's no point in writing a 1 in front there. So that stays. And on the other side, because we divided by negative 5, we're going to flip this bit that way. 
and negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. So <clears throat> now we can finally get to solving the problem. And we got to ask ourselves, when is the absolute value of something greater than 1? So let's put a 1 over here. So if the, is the absolute value of 1 greater than 1? No, it's not. But is the absolute value of 1.0001 greater than 1? Yes, it is. So we're talking about all the numbers to the right here, as well as every single number to the left of negative 1. So if you took the absolute value of any of those numbers, the right of 1 to the left of negative 1, it would hold this true. So now we've got to look for x values. What can I replace this variable with so that I can get a number that is to the right of 1 or uh, to the left of negative 1? So this is going to be, so when you set this up, so this negative 2x minus 7, it has to be what? Greater than 1? And negative 2x minus 7 has to be less than 1. So this is an or question. Um, so, can I scroll? All right, so I'm going to scroll and let's start solving it. And we get that this is plus 7, plus 7. We're going to get negative 2x is, uh, what do you call, greater than 8. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and x is less than negative 4. We got to slip, switch the sign the other way, right? Because we're dividing by a negative number. And then on this side, we got plus 7, plus 7 negative 2x less than positive 6, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and x is less than, uh, not less than, but um, as is x is greater than uh, negative 3. <coughs> Did I do this right? 6 divided by negative 2, and oh, I forgot to flip the sign, so that's, oh, I did, I did. So, we graph our two solutions. Here's negative 3, here's negative 4, and the values that we can use, the values of x that can we use, they have to be greater than negative 3, so numbers that way, and less than negative 4, which is this way. Right, so all those numbers I can replace, put it over here, and we make this an equal to So just for an example's sake, let's pick a number that's to the right of negative 3. And you know what, I'm going to pick 0, because that's a very easy number to use. So if I substitute 0 over here, I'm going to get negative 2 times 0, which is 0. 0 minus 7 is negative 7. And if you took the absolute value of negative 7, you would get 7. And 7 is definitely greater than 1. So you can see those works. And you can also pick a number to the left of negative 4, substitute, and you'll see that's right. So now, how do we write our answer? So our answer here um, is going to be all the numbers. Right. So we write it in notation we can say that it's negative 4, not including negative 4, therefore we use this, and it goes all the way to infinity on the negative side, right? And again, it's like that. Those numbers combine with the numbers on the right side, which is to the right of negative 3, all the way to infinity. Okay. Idea what number that was. 30, I think. Yes. An easy one. 30. Negative 2 minus 3. Uh, negative 3x. Oh boy. So there's something. Well, I'm going to assume that this one is like this. They forgot the absolute value sign after the 5. I'm just going to assume. Okay. So hopefully you caught up on that. So plus 2 plus 2 on both sides, that side, and that gives you uh, negative 3. And we have negative 3. We're going to divide this by, oops. We're going to divide both sides by negative 3 now. And then divide this guy by negative 3, and this guy by negative 3. So that becomes 1. Negative 3 minus, negative 3x minus 5, less or equal to we got we divided by a negative number. Therefore, to keep that inequality true, we have to um, change the sign the other way. So, <clears throat> when is the absolute value of anything less than one? Well, so, if you take the absolute value of one, will it work? Yes. Right. So again, imagine this was this, and we want to fill in 
this area here is all the possible um, numbers that we can take the absolute value of and then whose result is going to be um, less than or equal to 1. So the absolute value of 1 works, the absolute value of 0, the absolute value of 0 0.5 works. Right? So all those these numbers from here all the way up to here work. So if you pick any of these numbers here between negative 1 and 1 and you replace it over here and you take the absolute value, it gives you uh, keeps the inequality true because it's going to end up being less than 1. So now that we know, we got to figure out what can I replace this x with? Well, I got to replace x with a number so that when I do this calculation here, it results in a number between negative 1 and 1. Right? Um, so and this is an n problem, so we're going to write that negative 3x minus 5 has to be less than 1, right? It has to be less than 1, but it has to be greater than negative 1. So that's our equation. Inequality, sorry. Plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. You're going to get negative, uh, sorry, positive 4, less or equal to negative, less than 3, greater than negative 3x. And I think, oh, yes, it is. And this is going to be 6. Now we're going to divide everything by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. And because we're dividing by a negative, everything's going to go point the other way. So, ta -da, ta -da, it's going to be uh, negative 2, x, ta -da, ta -da, point the other way, and uh, this is negative 1. So negative 1 is going to be greater than x, which is going to be greater or uh, equal to negative 2. So, again, our x value has to be between negative 1, negative 1, and negative 2. Right? So, our solution. Okay, so, um, and you can always try it out. So pick a number between negative 2 and negative 1, substitute it here, replace the x value with that, and see if you take the absolute value of it, it's less or equal uh, to 1. So let's pick a number between negative 1 and negative 2, and you know what? We can pick negative 2, so let's pick negative 2. So I'm going to just pick negative 2. So if I pick negative 2, which is part of my solution according to this, I'm going to get negative 3 times negative 2 minus 5 less or equal to 1. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. And then I'm going to subtract 5, right? 6 minus 5 is 1, and I can finally take the absolute value, and the absolute value of 1 is 1. Is that less or equal to 1? Yes, it is. So again, and then if you are still in doubt, pick another number. Pick, I mean, any number between negative 2 and negative 1. Pick negative 1.5, negative 1.8999, and uh, plug it in and see if it works. So all these values can be, can we place the x here? Okay. And now uh, you'll get a number that will make this inequality true. 31. Negative 5 minus 2, 3x minus 6, negative 8. So plus 5, plus 5, these two go away, negative 2, 3x minus 6, less or equal to negative 3. We're going to divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. Therefore, 3x minus 6 is greater than, greater than, uh, what do you call 1.5. And I'll leave it as a decimal. Okay, because 3, negative times a ne divided by negative is a positive, and 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. So, when, uh, so what's, so again, if you think about this, the absolute value of what numbers are greater than 1.5. So if you just want to graph that, for example, think about what can I take the absolute value of so that it's greater than 1.5. So, well, obviously, 1.5 won't work. So, but numbers to the right of 1.5 will work. 1.6, 1.7, 1.51. So any number going that way will make this inequality true, just like any number to the left of negative 1.5 will also make that true. So if I took the absolute value of negative 10, for example, for negative 10, right? It's, it's a distance from negative 10 to 0 greater than 1.5? Yes, it is. So those also work. So now we know what our, what our values, uh, the values are 
going to be, right? They're going to be with absolute value greater than 1.5. So we got to figure out the x value here. So what can I replace x with so that when I do all these operations inside here and then take the absolute value, it's greater than 1.5. Well, so this is an or problem, right? So we're going to set that 3x minus 6 has to be greater than 1.5 or 3x minus 6 has to be less than 1.5 and then we just solve. Um, let's see. So plus 6, plus 6, 3x is greater than 7.5. Uh, we're going to divide by 3, divide by 3, and x is going to be greater than 7.5 divided by 3 is 2.5. And then or and then here we're gonna get plus 6 plus 6. And we're gonna get 3x is less than less than what's 1.5 plus 6? It's uh 4.5, yes. 4.5, yes. And then we're gonna divide this by 3, divide by 3, and x is going to be less than 1.5. So to graph this, for the values that will make this inequality true, to substitute, x has to be greater than 2.5, so 2.5, or or 1.5, or less than 1.5. So any number to the right of 2.5 and any number to the left of 1.5 will make this inequality true when you substitute. So, and then to write this in notation, you're going to write that um, 1.5, right? But we're not including 1.5, and it's going to go all the way to infinity on this side, not including infinity, and all the union of uh, and all those numbers with these numbers on this side, 2.5 not including, to the right, 2.5 going all the way to infinity. Um, so that group of numbers plus this group of, and this group of numbers will make that uh, inequality true. I have no idea what number this was. Is that 31? Okay, good. We are done. Let's go.